What's up guys, Mike the Tech here. Welcome to episode 16 of our Game Maker Studio 2 top-down shooter or shmup tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to make a title screen for our game, which is going to show you how to not only create multiple rooms, but uh, move between the rooms, which is actually super, super simple. I'm also going to show you how to make some user interface buttons so that uh, instead of just having a press space to go to the next level, you can actually click on where you want to go. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Um, first off, we need some user interface icons and, or graphics. So again, we're going to refer to Kenny.nl. Um, I usually just jump into Photoshop and make something square and uh, design it based on the kind of game we're going to make. Um, but for the sake of accessibility, let's go ahead and um, grab one of these UI packs from Kenny.nl. That's K-E-N-N-E-Y.nl. Not affiliated, not a sponsor, just a really cool dude who releases free stuff. Um, so let's jump into our game. And we are going to right click on rooms and go to create room. And call this title screen. And we can drag it above this other room. Now our game is 1920 by 1080. So our title screen also needs to be 1920 by 1080. All right, so now our room sizes are exactly the same. Um, in this level, I think it would be good to uh, recreate some of the background effects. So I'll go ahead and go into our title screen because you don't want a boring blank title screen. You want it to be kind of flashy or interactive or kind of make people want to check it out. So for our background, we'll go ahead and use our uh, background sprite. We'll horizontally and vertically tile it. And then we will add a vertical speed of five. And if we hit play, we have a tiling background, perfect. Now we also want to add the second background layer um, for the invisible one. So let's go ahead and choose the, the sprite with the extra stars, tile it horizontally and vertically. We can see them propagate there. And we'll set a different vertical speed, say like 10. And now if we hit play, it's going much faster now this is very similar to the way our game looks so i can even add a horizontal speed to that other one just to kind of um change it up a bit that's kind of interesting so now we need to add a user interface element so let's go ahead and we're not going to put the title just yet i'll show you guys a cool website to make some very nice looking titles but we'll right click on sprites and go to uh, create sprite from image. Actually, I'll go ahead and uh, pull up the one that I want already. So let's go ahead and choose a nice green button. Let's choose this one. I'm just gonna drag this in here. And I'm gonna name that SPR for sprite and button. All right. So we also need to create an object for that. So we'll create an object and we'll choose that as a sprite and we'll call this OBJ for object button. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, add a create event and we're gonna set its X and Y coordinates to uh, the center of the screen or just the X coordinate to the, the center. That way it's horizontally um, in the center of the screen. So we can do that by, let's see, I don't remember. Uh, let's set a variable. We'll say X. Well, we don't want to assign a variable, we want to set a variable, right? I'm trying to think if there's a cleaner way to do this. People are going to roast me in it, but whatever. We'll set X to room width divided by two. All right. 
So let's just see if this works because I'm not super confident just yet. Uh, oh yeah, we have to go to the instances layer and then drag it in. We'll put it to the left. Hey, and it's in the center, perfect. So it did work. Um, so we're gonna move this up just slightly. And then in our object button, we actually wanna draw the text on it. So we're going to go to draw and choose draw. Now we always have to draw self because self is the actual graphic. So we're gonna go down here to drawing and choose draw self. We also want to uh, draw a value and the value that we want to draw is start. All right, so now it just says start. Uh, relative to the center of the button, we can also, uh, where is, we need to set the color. So we're gonna choose set draw color. And let's try white for now, just to see what it looks like. And we can, uh, where is it? set the font and we don't have any font set up but I'll show you how to do that in just a second and set text alignment and we're going to choose center middle all right so now we need a font so we already have a font score so let's just see what that looks like in this uh, in this button Eh. Oh, the point of origin is a little to the left. Okay, so let's go into our sprite and instead of top left, we need to choose middle center and then we'll hit play again. There we go. So now we have a start button. You can choose any font you want. You can, you know, whatever, anything you want. Uh, this is your game and that's just what I chose. So now we need to add some interactivity to our button. So we're going to add an event and we'll choose mouse, uh, I believe left pressed. Yeah, let's do left pressed. And then we're just gonna choose go to room. So we're gonna find our rooms. Let's see if I remember where this is. Um, yeah, here it is, rooms. Go to room and it'll say go to a specific room so we're going to choose room zero because that's where our plane is um and the reason i want to choose go to a specific room instead of go to next room is because if you have for example another button for credits then when they click on that you'd want to choose the credits room um, where it's going to have your text uh, so let's hit play and now we have this uh, room, we can click everywhere, nothing happens, and then when we click on the button, we're in the game. So now we have a title screen, which uh, was pretty simple to make. Uh, as a little bonus, let's go ahead and add some extra fun to it. Uh, let's go into Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, any editor will do. GIMP uh, should work. I'm not sure if uh, Paint has uh, round transparencies as a capability, but uh, any advanced uh, photo editor should be fine. So let's go ahead and uh, create new. And we're going to choose, let's do a thousand by a thousand and the background that's fine we'll just leave it as as is okay so create now we have this we're going to create a new layer and we're going to get rid of the background um, so I'm gonna go to my brush tool and I'm gonna choose 900 pixels since I made this a thousand and let's choose some cool colors. So I'm going to choose a nice spacey uh, purple. Yeah, that'll do. And I'm going to make the softness of our brush very soft. So the hardness is at 0%. I'm going to choose soft round. And I will click right here. Perfect. Uh, not quite perfect. Let's do... All right. 
We may need to make it slightly bigger or smaller. So I'm going to put 850 pixels instead. That way it doesn't bleed off the image. All right, so there we go. Now I'll get rid of this background. And I'm going to file, save as uh, purple. And I'm going to save it as a PNG uh, portable network graphics because that will save the transparency in the background, which we need. And I will make one more color that I think might make it look cool. Let's go ahead and change this to green. I don't know how it's going to blend, but it will hopefully not be horrible. All right, so now we have that green color file. Save as a PNG and call it green. All right, so this is just to add a little extra fun to our uh, to our title screen. In our title screen, we're going to create a sprite. Actually, we can drag them in again. Why not? Let's just do that. So we'll go to the desktop, find our purple and our green, drag these in. There we go. And we just have to rename them SPR green and choose middle center and then name this one SPR purple and choose middle center cool all right so now we need to create objects for uh, bo both of these um, items basically so we're going to right click and create an object now uh, so I was a little distracted because it looked like my audio wasn't being picked up and hopefully it is because I do not want to have to read this whole video. Uh, so we're going to choose uh, green and we'll type in obj underscore green. And we're going to add a create event. And in that create event, we're going to set up some movement. So we're going to choose, let's see. movement here it is so we can set direction and we can set speed yeah all right so the direction we want to use a function called random range so we're going to type in random underscore and you'll see range come up here and this is going to give you a random range between uh, the first number and the second number you input so I'm going to put between 0 degrees and 360 degrees so it's going to go in a random direction and then in whatever direction it's going we're going to set a speed and uh let's see what speed uh we can have it at a random speed as well so we could do random range and then we can say between one and three all right so now when we place one of these in the title screen and hit play We have a green blob floating around, but it currently just goes off the screen and doesn't come back. So we're going to play with a little piece of code in the step event. And I don't believe there's a way to do this without code. Um, let's see. Do we have, oh yeah, we do have, we have wrap around the room. So here we go. Wrap horizontal and vertical and we're going to add a 500 pixel margin so it doesn't just pop off the screen and let's hit play see they put everything in a drag and drop it's so cool all right so it's going off the screen and now it's coming up here perfect so we're going to go into our title screen and add another one we'll just put them right here and then we're going to make an object for our uh, purple one. So we'll choose purple and we want the same event. So for our create event, we want both of these. So for the create event, we can paste and we have random range for the direction and random range for the speed. And then for the step, uh, just to make sure that it wraps, we will choose uh, wrap around the room with a margin of 500. And then we'll place some of these. Oh, we haven't named it yet. So OBJ 
underscore purple. All right. So now in our title screen, we'll add one here and we'll add one here and maybe one here. Why not? Let's get messy. <laughs> so let's hit play. Yes. And now all of these objects kind of float around and overlay each other and uh, basically makes it look really cool. Um, we might even be able to add more to this because they don't seem to be overlapping very much. Oh yeah, they're coming back. So things are happening. Things are happening. Um, let's put this here. You can see how it kind of affects um, the look. It's really interesting. I'm just going to go overboard with these. <laughs> so let's hit play. Yeah, that looks interesting. So it's kind of like fading in and out. And um, I like it. It's cool. It's something that's not a standard screen and it's going to catch people's attention. Now you just got to put a big logo here, right? Um, so let's make sure that our uh, button is on top. So I'm actually going to get rid of this button and I'm going to go to an instance layer on top of it and put this button here because I don't like that the colors go above it. There we go. Now they go behind it and um, the button's always visible, which is cool, which is what we want. Uh, so this video is going very long, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with another video. Let's maybe put the title up there. All right. Have a good one. Peace.